Lockers did it, man. That thing was hooked up. Kept sliding over to the big bed hole. Couldn't get out. Had to get it to winch. Here we go. Oh, I'm losing ice in my cooler. Hurry. Here we got some of this stuff. Okay. Well, I picked up Payway's rear axle right there, and the splines cut me. So we know he's got three splines. <laughs> Jimmy's cracked. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy's been eating some peanuts. Leaving Jimmy's cracks, several of our crews were glad they brought CO2 and compressors because the thick mud demanded extremely low tire pressures. Several drivers without bead locks ended up ripping their BF Goodrich tires off the rims. It's kind of hanging here waiting on. Uh, uh, I don't know. We got the camera ready. Brian's fixing to put on the show here in this mud hole. It looks like it's about three foot deep. Oh. I'm buff out. Just the fender. We're going to have to do a little work on that. There's this tree back there, and it was straight, and then it leaned over, grabbed the fender. I just did that. I've never seen moving trees before. Little body work here. Thanks, Cooter. That's all right. Anytime. this the insane terrain off-road park. Cliffs is really a great place. We had to winch down there at the bottom to get the right line, and I don't even really want to look at the body right now, but that was a lot of fun. With the trail day done, Matt DeFelice and our video crew found that even getting back to camp oh. was a challenge. He slipped off the trail and busted a Burfield joint. Fred Perry had already lost an airbag. Tom Boyd's trouble with his Bronco continued with a steering box failure. Brian Richmond needed a new locker. The usual assortment of U-joints and hubs had to be fixed, and more than one cameraman needed to dry out. right front uh, U-joint that he oh, broke trying to get out of the creek today. Oh, we've got a lot of stuff going on right now. We've got more vehicles broken. That one has a transmission blown out of it in half. This one the front, front end rebuilt. front end, they're putting in a, a new uh, part in it. Impact. You got the joint replaced. Their transmission broke. And for some reason, they brought a spare transmission. Yeah. Thank goodness they did, huh?
kids, do not try this at home. These are professional mechanics on a closed course. Well, the, the maintenance schedule that I keep, no matter no matter where I'm at or what I'm doing, when it gets 5,000 miles on that tranny, I just, instead of changing the fluid, I just put another one in. Let's, let's see the difference here. You have a nice, clean case. All right, now, hand right back down here. Broken case. Bad, bad case. Yeah, it, it was really wanting a half inch metric adjustable, but we, we ended up, we're tapping with a pair of channel locks and a broke tap right now. On the back of that head. We are an hour, 45 minutes into it. It is late. Look all this transmission fluid leaking on it. Oh, looks like the rain's picking up. These guys are calling it quits. We're getting out of here. Calling it quits. Calling it quits. Huh? He drives one of them Cherokees. Oh, he drives a Cherokee. No wonder. Hey, guys, you settle a bet for me? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. When were four-wheel drive trucks invented? <laughs> yeah, I've got to tell you everything. I ain't got time to damn talk to you. I got work to do. Good enough. I was kind of nervous at first, hear all these legendary names coming out here to your park and stuff, and it turned out that everybody's just like everybody else, just like to go out and have a good time. I was amazed that uh, everybody would just watch everybody, you know, sit back and watch everybody come up the hill and that. I was hoping to cover a lot more trails, but it was fun. I had a great time. I remember this for a long time. Okay, it is a road day. We are traveling to Apple Valley Farms. We're gonna go all the way down to the same stop sign, going up the hill to the freeway. Get gas, because we're not stopping again for four hours. We're about ready to get hit hard by rain. So we bid a final goodbye to the state of Illinois and headed north into Wisconsin, hoping to avoid an imminent downpour. Lots of rain. Well, it was leaking, uh, but I believe we overfilled it and uh, it stopped now. Doing good. It looks like uh, Rick's going to lead us into some sort of surprise adventure here. Well, you see the rain didn't really deter us. We've got a secret Illinois Northern Test Facility. We've got this dirt road that no one knows about. We're going to hit the mud and the ruts and maybe be children of the corn. <laughs> We're moving again, it's really slick. Again, sideways is how we normally have to do this action. Brian thought we were on paved road still. He said, this ain't mud. We may have hydrolocked the ultimate Tacoma in a little itty bitty mud puddle. We always clean out the mass airflow sensor at 3,000 miles. So we figured we'd stop right here and check that out. <laughs> just was awesome. I had no idea we were going to be hitting any off-road today. Came up around that corner, dropped us down onto this muddy farm road. It's like us uh, spinning and sliding sideways all the way down that. That's a heck of a lot of fun when you only get to see rocks. I like mud. Gotta give Payway credit for coming up with that rainstorm. It wasn't raining on us all coming up the road just to wash all the mud off. Look how dry I am staying. Can't get any drier than that. So Keith Beely runs out of gas here, coasts down around the corner and just up to the edge. Now he's looking for people to help push him in. Ran out of gas, right there. As the email said from Rick Payway that our rigs had to go at least 150 miles. We went 151, I ran out right here, 20 feet from the pump. We expect to see some strange sights while we're on the road, but we don't expect to eat there. Well, I hope nobody minds airplane food. But it was Rick Payway's plan, and we were going to follow it. Airplane food is good. I like airplane food. This is more than actually you get on an airplane now. There's 
a guy that watches you. Do you have a four wheeling one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, like tires and mud. <laughs> so I got one with a Jeep. We have good rigs. 56, 16. After our first run, I started burning oil at the rate of about a quart every 150 miles. And now we're up to about two quarts every 40 miles. So we're just hoping the engine holds together till we get to the end of the ultimate adventure. We got a power steering leak from our ram assist. It does look like it's getting black over there. We could be in trouble. And we did manage to beat the oncoming rain. With a full six hour drive still ahead, the Ultimate Adventure Caravan crosses into Wisconsin to camp outdoors for the third consecutive night, this time at a private park called Apple Valley Farms. So, where's the safety team? How much further is it to our camper? That's just five minutes. Oh, finally, that was a long day. We're uh, down here installing a new uh, drive shaft that Tom Woods just uh, made up yesterday afternoon and overnighted to me after I went through a series of rotating drive shafts and a uh, torn up CV joint that I couldn't manage to get anywhere else. <laughs> you think it's this good? I was the one that broke it. Huh? I wasn't the one that broke it. You were the one. I think you were driving. Oh, I was sure. the one. <laughs> yeah, you were the one that broke it. I was the one that broke it. Oh, it was great. What's that? It's a fire. No, no, at Apple Valley Farms, that's a fire. Day five on the road, day three on the trail. We awoke to a beautiful morning at Apple Valley Farm south of Eau Claire, Wisconsin. So this is Hawaiian shirt day. That's my favorite wheeling attire. And since it's my birthday, that's what we all get to wear. Let's go wheeling! Hi, my name is Mike Hagan. I'm one of the lucky readers that got picked to go on the ultimate adventure. Okay, so what's the name of the trail we're going on, Mike? Pink trail, it's the girl trail. Girly trail, okay, we're gonna have fun on that. The trail is basically uh, steep up and up downhill. We've got like a ladder effect here. Found the right gear, found the right stump. That was a nice little hill. Come on, boys. I did it. You can do it. He's not going anywhere. Oh, that's it. This first trail is really kicking their butt. Pull the cable, pull the cable, drive. Go, go, go. like sand, real loose topsoil. It's just powder, and as a result, you just instantly dig down. Some of the other stuff we've got has been a little bit more compact, so it's definitely tough. I'm feeling pretty comfortable at this point. This seems to be more trail running than last year was. Last year there was more mud, and it's just, just different places. Every place in the country is different. Definitely got to keep the momentum up and peel out, is my theory. Get around that corner, and it, uh, the ground sort of goes from hard to just loose, loose sandy so soil with uh, those trees, and you just start digging a hole if you don't have the momentum. We're doing a lot of winching on this one. Well, you had a chance to try out that worn winch. What do you think now? If not for the worn, we'd have never made it. We plan to continue wheeling all the way through. And how often are you checking the oil? Uh, about every hill. 
It's <laughs> a lot of dirt and rut stuff we're not really used to, to wheeling with, so it's fun. It's, it's really nice to come out to something different and try out and see how our rigs work in a different country. Up just a couple feet and let's hit her. Here, the big secret to this hill is not just to work the throttle, but especially keep the front wheels going and leave the parking brake on. Is that true? Uh, something close to that. Uh, if you leave the parking brake on, it takes a little bit of power away from the rear, and you might not have quite enough to make it up to the top. So you got to back up, leave the brake off, and then hit it again. Then sometimes it does work. Rear shaft. You, need, you need that. You need that part. I got a little hung up back there on the rear diff. I had to give it that bump. Couldn't crawl it. There's just no way. So you give it a little goose, you help your tires get over the front and the rear, boom, you're over. What's really causing problems is this stomp right here. I like rocks a little better. They don't jump out of you like these logs do. Catch up your tires and uh, yeah, rocks are a little more predictable maybe. I'll get right there. Woo! Keep on the gas pedals as friend. <laughs> a big bang right up on that last rock. What was that? No idea. Gonna, gonna double check that real quick. Just broke the new joint. Once we get on jack stands, we'll take about 15 minutes to swap a new axle shaft. I'm supposed to show up and look good. I'm not supposed to do anything here. I'm the face guy. God told me not to be a tree hugger, but to be a rock hugger, and I don't follow directions very well. I always knew he was a little squirrely, but now he's trying to climb trees. Valve covers off, rock covers off. Trying to kick the habit of smoking. What's coming up next? Log hill type climbs with a little more solid dirt than we've been seeing, and then it moves on to some shale with big rock ledges coming out, which will be more difficult to climb. Okay, we're gonna conquer Log Hill. You just gotta hit it. <laughs> hey guys, Mike says you just gotta hit it. Uh, it's pretty much luck, you know. First time for everything. That's Apple Valley for you. Sounds like a uh, CTMU joint, just like that. Uh... Chris Durham is driving the wheels off of my Jeep. How'd you do? They're doing pretty good. It's getting better. It's going to take about three or four more hours of riding, and then we should be over the smoking habit. I get a little bit of bump. Just 
tires. We're all standing up here eating a bucket of cheese balls. We're like, hey, you need some more traction. We threw a little bit of cheese balls on there, and lo and behold, his next run, he came flying right up through it. Digging her up. Yep. Mike Hagan of Apple Valley Farm says that this is as tough a hill as they have to offer, and it's taken its toll so far. We hope to do a couple of more trails here yet today, but it depends on the daylight. We're chewing a lot of it up right now. That's not quite the line I wanted for this one. Up until about two minutes ago, the only panel I didn't have dented was the hood. I mean, that's the only panel I really cared about, and I got a little dent in there, so the rest of it's okay. I can uh, buff most of this out. I think it's got a little glass on the inside that might be cracked, but hey, it's all good. It was nice to camp on site. As soon as we finished our trails, we were back in camp quickly without ever leaving Apple Valley Farms. We were entertained by Clifton Slay, who tested Tom Boyd's recently repaired steering box and put on an enjoyable show at the same time. Fresh burgers and brats were served by the BF Goodrich crew, and we spent the rest of the night wishing Rick Payway a happy birthday, sitting around a campfire so big that it took a full rick of wood just to stoke it. The cake was just caused to celebrate a birthday and a trail day with minimal breakage. That meant most of us could finally get a decent night's rest. Okay, hey, welcome to the final road day of Ultimate Adventure. And off to the right, you're going to be seeing Lake Superior after we cross this beautiful bridge. Going day six was a road day. With Rick as our tour guide, we needed to make the trip from central Wisconsin all the way to Eveleth, Minnesota, where we would take much needed showers at a nearby hotel and prepare for our final trail day. Rick's made it, had us make a right turn. Now we're on this uh, very minimally maintained road. Day four without a shower. It'd be nice to get to a hotel a relatively decent time tonight. Are we lost, Rick? Lost? Well, let's just say that in the middle of Minnesota, in the middle of nowhere, at the end of the road, we found a little boy reading one of our magazines as we cruised by right after we find a street sign saying four-wheel drive. Not four-wheel drive avenue or just streets, four-wheel drive. I guess we came to the right place. We must be lost. What you reading, buddy? Jimmy, I saw that truck in one of my magazines. The last one uh, payway right there. That's my magazine. That's your nice magazine. Meet. And let's see who's here. We have Fred Williams. Here, we go like the sign. Greater grade. Grab that steering wheel. Here, grab your seatbelt. Grab the wheel like you're peeling out. This is the ultimate adventure. This is definitely the ultimate adventure. Right now? Yeah, by the way, the avalanche over there, yeah. that's on the cover. New Favorite part of meeting up with you guys is seeing Rick Pewey and meeting him in person. This has been a great trip so far. We have one more day of wheeling. Don't forget, you have to check in your vehicle here for the off-road vehicle park, Iron Range. You're good. Make sure that everybody has all their paperwork in order. We are repairing Beaver Sleeve before the sun goes down. 
So the hotel parking lot becomes a hub of activity with repairs taking place for the rest of the evening. Cody Schumann visited himself working on a faulty map sensor and airlock. <laughs> Dallas Nunn was finishing up on a job on Corbin Cowan's rig that he had actually started several hours before. We decided to try and assemble the axle with the new U-joint on the road today. We were loaned a special U-joint press and was actually able to do it on my lap in the passenger seat in about 10 minutes thanks to the uh, special tools. Almost. Then Tom Boyd solicited the help of Tim Hardy. What jump to here is the ultimate trail fix for the UA. So what Tim's going to do to get me on the trail steering right is going to build up this, weld up this area and grind and cut a new tooth in here so that it's identical looking to that. First pass. All right, this one looks ready enough till we can grind this down and make it look like the other two. After a little cleanup. If this works, we're gonna be steering right and on the trail. If it doesn't, I'm gonna be goofy foot. We are fitting our teeth here to see how it feels as we roll through the motion. Uh, crack the can like converter, uh, take the toast to the set of rings, and uh, we're just trying to get the can like converter welded up to reduce some noise for tomorrow and then uh, add a bunch of oil to that today so I can make this one last trail and uh, tow it home. After four days of camping, I'm ready for a hotel. And I just heard they got a jacuzzi too, so uh, it's going to bring us all back to life. This is the last trail day of Ultimate Adventure. We're going to be going to the Iron Range Off-Road Park. We're going to be led by Lance O'Mersa. He's going to take us out there and show us the Razor Rock. Hi, I'm Lance O'Mersa, a member of the Northern Minnesota Jeepers and Trail Boss today for the Ultimate Adventure. And we're here at the uh, Gilbert off-highway vehicle wreck area in Gilbert, Minnesota. Today we're just pulling up to Ted's Revenge. Uh, it's the last stop of the ultimate adventure. We're gonna wheel him today and uh, see if we can have a little carnage and a little fun. is going to give us a little history of Ted's Revenge. You'll, you'll see Ted when you get up here. It's pretty interesting. It's called Ted's Revenge. We're cutting the ramp in here uh, a couple of years ago and up popped an uh, old miner's helmet with the name Ted on the front of it. So I told Phil to keep digging. We might find Ted and lo and behold here's Ted's Revenge. <laughs> 